how can we identify with someone that in real life we would never be? You know, if, if you want to say, Julia Roberts and Pretty Woman, well, that would never be something that I would do, but we still root for her, we still like her. Well, if you're a writer, I think you have to realize identification has nothing to do with who we are in real life. It only has to do with emotion. It only has to do with empathy because we are, there's nothing in real life that would make me like uh, Sully or whatever his name is in Avatar. I'm nothing like Indiana Jones. I'm nothing like the hero of Shrek. But that isn't what, that's not why we go to movies. We don't really go to movies to become characters that are so much like we are, we can see those people by going home. Yeah. And that's, those are the people we want to get away from. What you want to do is create that empathy using those tools so we become them on an emotional, psychological level. That's the fun of it. So we become a space traveler 200 years in the future. We become a soldier of fortune. We become an ogre, whatever. We become a woman uh, on the Titanic. So those two things are really better thought of as disconnected completely, I think. Yeah, also, also along that line, I agree totally with what Michael's saying, but that we, co we connect with characters on an emotional level. And if you, you take any of the characters that you've mentioned and Michael's mentioned, and you say, okay, that person's life is nothing like mine. I am not Shrek, I am not Indiana Jones, I'm, I'm nothing. But my life is so much like him because I suffer and experience all the emotions that he goes through. I, I, I have feelings of abandonment. I have feelings of, of pride. I have feelings of discouragement. In other words, I can identify with him emotionally. Not that I want to be him or be like him, but I like to know that he is actually not that different from me. In other words, there is a similarity, but the similarity is on the emotional experiential level, not on the action level or the career level. If you take, like you mentioned, Titanic, there you have the two lovers on Titanic. Do we all understand falling in love? Yes, hopefully we all do. Do we all understand being in danger? Yes, do we do. Do we all understand fears of death and dying? Yes, we do. Have we ever been on the Titanic? No. Or sinking boat? No. I mean, in other words, we haven't been there. But what we can, the experiences that these a good film will allow us to have with the characters, with, with this, not identifying with the character, except on the emotional level. And that's where we get hooked. And that, that's how we, we um, emp not only empathize, but we project ourselves in, into them and we play them. When you read a script, you play all the characters. Even when you watch a film, you actually project yourself inside the character to go on not the um, adventure of Indiana Jones, but the experience, the emotional experience, that ride, that's the ride you want to go on. And, that, and that's what makes us connect potentially with this film on a very, very deep level. It used to be, when I, when I used to work for production companies, and it seemed like every year or two I'd get this, people would come in and pitch ideas. And there was always someone who would come in and have a pitch like, this movie, the script I wrote, it's going to be huge because it's about a bowler. And then they'd say, do you know that 30 million people in this country bowl? And I, my answer was always, well, first of all, if they're bowling, they're not going to the movies, so we're not <laughs> going to get any money out of them. But that's not why people go to the movies, to see people who are doing what they already do. It has to do with just what Mark said. It's, it's not situational, it's emotional. It's, are they feeling what I have felt, at least to some extent, maybe not as big as they do, but have I experienced this before on the inside? That's what creates the connection. Mm -hmm.